Well, hello, and thank you for joining me for another Alex on Tech and ITY video. I'm joined today by Trevor Churchley. He is the National Director of Project Solutions at Talent Crew. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Alex. Thanks for having me. You're most welcome. Now, I know that Talent Crew is a part of the Paxis and AdCorp group of companies, which has been in business for and helping small businesses uh, and small and large grow for over half a century. And I know that you have a great presentation, which we'll go through in a moment, which explains you know, the impressive Talent Crew proposition. But uh, could you please describe for me Talent Crew just before we start in a couple of sentences? Um, so Talent Crew is the future-focused IT professional services and uh, project solutions company. Uh, mm -hmm. We're part of a $500 million organization called AdCorp Group. And uh, we are a positive disruptor um, in the uh, independent professional services industry. Uh, we're passionate about both the future of work and the gig economy, and uh, we are leading um, the industry towards project engagement innovation. Uh, we focus on repeatable team delivery uh, outcomes, uh, off-peak workforce models, rapid deployed virtual ventures, and other future-centric engagement um, innovations, which we can talk about um, during the interview. Um, and we're also passionate about evangelizing small independent Australian businesses um, to support medium to large enterprises through co a cooperative collaboration and really promote them to be the hero of our industry. Okay, so look, let's go deeper into what makes Talent Crew an organization that um, truly harnesses talent into reorganizable teams of people already familiar and at ease with each other that can professionally and flexibly work and start work on virtually any IT project and hit the ground running. So let's have a look at your presentation and what that all means. Sure. Okay, let's start um, sharing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So our main form of professional services is independent tribe partnerships, which is which we'll talk about, but ultimately it's plug and play repeatable team delivery based on mm -hmm. outcome. So just to give you a bit of an overview of talent crew, we, we obviously went into it earlier, but um, we regard ourselves as a future-centric IT professional services and project solutions company with a difference. And we'll go through those differences as we go through the presentation. Mm -hmm. um, everything that we've developed really comes down to, it's based on market research and industry feedback. Um, pretty much over the last five years of my career, um, really listening to, um, to clients, listening to independent IT contractors and listening to small business and really trying to find a way to be able to come up with a solution that really does um, fit um, the needs of the future of work and the future of projects. Um, as I mentioned before, Talent Crew is part of a $500 million human capital solutions-based organization. And therefore it gives us the really the size, the power and the scale to be able to support such solutions. But we're really focused on outcomes and partnerships and, and not transactions. We really want to move towards that outcome-based uh, engagement. We are different by design. Um, we're mm -hmm. focused on leveraging and evangelizing um, the gig economy to firmly um, increase project agility, flexibility, efficiency, productivity, whilst reducing the overall costs of projects to our customers. Because at the end of the day, um, you can have a great idea. Um, it can be innovation, but if it um, certainly doesn't fit into budgets um, and it's too expensive, then great idea, but too expensive. So we really do need to make sure that we are looking at uh, uh, reducing the overall cost of projects as we go. And I was going to say, you know, in today's modern world, I mean, things can be customised more than ever and they need to be customised in that way. And uh, clearly you're doing that. Well, I suppose there, there's certainly a level of bespoke solutions, but we also really want to bring it back to a central methodology, which we'll explain mm -hmm. as well, really about that repeatable team delivery model. So just a, a little bit of an overview um, um, for everyone in regard to where we fit into our group. So our group is called AdCorp. AdCorp is a South African uh, multinational, uh, which uh, purchased the brand you can see on the screen there, Paxis, in 2013. That was their first entry into the Australian market. So I think most people, most of the viewers will recognise the Paxis brand. Um, it's certainly one of the most recognisable Australian IT recruitment brands. It's been around for 50, 60 years, um, a huge amount of time. And really synonymous with integrity and honesty and really looking after um, the IT talent community. What a lot of people don't know though, there are other parts of our group, uh, one of which is called All About Expert. And All About Expert are not a recruitment company at all. They're a project mm -hmm. management services company, so a consultancy. So uh, where Talent Crew is looking at um, being able to stage outcome-based solutions, it's great to have in our stable of brands a project management company that can effectively uh, manage programs on our behalf and with us in collaboration. 
We also have um, Labor Solutions Australia. So Labor Solutions Australia are a blue and white collar recruitment brand. Um, mm-hmm. They've been around for around 16 years. Um, so I'm very experienced in their fields. Everything from um, white collar, blue collar recruitment and uh, work right across Australia. So these three brands are very successful in their own right. Where Telecrew come in is where we're looking at um, solving customer problems. So really tying together the offerings of these three brands and solutioning. So talking to customers about their problems can coming up with innovative future centric uh, project and workforce solutions. Okay, let's get into more detail. So a little bit more detail. Um, and I, I, we like to explain our, problem, our promise statements. Um, I think it's really important for everyone to understand where we're coming from because it's okay to say that we're future centric, we're innovative, but why? You know, what is, mm. why are we looking to, to do what we're doing? So this will sort of give you a bit of an idea. Um, so the first one you can see there is connecting corporates and people to the gig economy. So a lot of people are hearing about the gig economy. Um, it's becoming more popular but it's more than just Uber drivers and food delivery drivers. Um, Mm. In the United States alone, there are 90 million uh, people that participate in the gig economy every day, um, even with COVID. Mm. Um, And and what we're finding is that um, the popularity of the gig economy, i.e. to be able to enter into um, a services community, task-based orientation, um, is becoming a lot more popular globally. In Australia, around about um, just over 30% of, uh, of IT workers uh, are in the gig economy, and that could be that um, they're freelancers, they're contractors, but they're quite traditional. Um, most people up until now have been working 40-odd hours a week. Um, and for us, what we want to be able to do, considering the gig economy is really moving towards task as opposed to time, um, we really want to be able to provide that connection between corporates and people. Being a shared economy, um, obviously we need to connect both sides. So it doesn't one doesn't work without the other. And through that, we can then drive project engagement innovation, which we'll talk about over um, the course of the slides. Okay. We're also very passionate about taking traditional body shopping uh, project resourcing to fully manage outcome-based models. Now, the 40-hour working week is a, it's a very old-fashioned, very traditional thing. Um, mm. In fact, I think it was Henry Ford that popularised it in the 1920s. The eight-hour working day goes back to Melbourne in the 1860s. So um, certainly been around for an awful long time, but things are changing. Um, are we really working 40 hours a week these days? Um, some people work less, um, they're looking for flexibility. Some people are working more, but generally don't get paid for the hours. They work for their employers uh, after up to their 40 hours. So for us, uh, what we're looking at doing is taking the traditional body shopping approach and really driving outcome-based models and really leveraging the gig economy to do so. But let's face it, when you're at home and you want the tradie or a tradie to come around and build a pergola in your house so off the back deck, um, you're really not going to engage a tradie so much on a time materials basis. What you're looking for is a, a, a quote, um, an outcome, a price, a time, and potentially a warranty as well if the work doesn't go so well. Therefore, we all have our expectations and, and, and the project can be completed very efficiently. Now, in IT, it doesn't happen as much when we get down to the independent contractor layer. So that's where we want to make a big difference. It sort of reminds one, me of that. Uh, so that reminds me of in, in you know in the 1860s that's when we had the invasion of the body shoppers and today we have the guardians of the gig economy galaxy oh i like that i might steal that <laughs> off you actually <laughs> <laughs> i always come up with crazy things like <laughs> <laughs> um the third one is championing team-based repeatable delivery models i think um it's certainly well noted that the power of a team that's been preformed, that's worked together time after time is a lot more efficient than a team that was put together yesterday to perform a task. I think, I think you mentioned to me when we were talking before that it can take a sort of a brand new team, you know, 12 to 15 weeks to sort of mm. get in harmony and understand each other. And your teams, they've been working together for a long time, so they're just ready to go. Pretty much, yeah. Um, in fact, it can take even longer than, than 12 to 15 weeks, sometimes, you know, a lot longer. And and a lot of companies are now focused and clients, especially in project mode in agile format, are really mm. focused on how long is it going to take for a team to reach peak productivity? Because that's where we're really gaining that efficiency. Mm. And if it's taking 15, 18 weeks longer, then of course, we're really burning money. We're burning cost. Mm. Mm. So for us, um, to be able to engage uh, pre-built teams uh, with expert leaders of people that have worked together, they understand each other's strengths and weaknesses and have synergy and the culture of delivery, well, all of a sudden we're ahead of the game. So, um, so that's really one of our promise statements. We're really focusing on that. 
The fourth one, um, I think, uh, is socially responsible more than anything else, um, and certainly in, in, in these times with COVID, is partnering and supporting small Australian IT businesses to engage with medium to large enterprises to deliver high quality project services. Um, a lot, our group has been working with independent contractors now for 56 years through the Paxis mm. brand. So, you know, we've been supporting small business for an awful long time. What we find every once in a while is that um, these independent contractors are career contractors. They decide they want to try it themselves. They want to be able to spin up their own professional services company. But as you appreciate, um, the road um, from small business to successful medium business is, is very tough. Um, mm. In fact, a lot fail off the start. Um, it's not as easy as just picking up a project, delivering it, and all of a sudden becoming the next Atlassian or Microsoft. Um, it, it becomes a, it can be some of a really hard slog and a big challenge, not least of which is you're running a business. So you're delivering for 40, 50 hours a week with a team, but then you've got to negotiate commercials, you've got debt factoring, you've got, um, you know, um, um, a whole range of things that you need to take into consideration, working capital, uh, making sure that you're selling, making sure you're marketing. And not everyone can be good at everything. So yeah. that becomes really difficult for small business to be able to get past the initial stages um, to become successful. Yeah. So for us, we've come up with a way to be able to support Australian small business um, into hopefully becoming the next um, level at Atlassian in Australia. And lastly, um, and we can't forget this, of course, because yeah. our solutions must really drive um, um, cost efficiency. And where we can do that through increasing project flexibility, efficiency, and productivity, then it's not just a great idea that costs a lot of money. In fact, no, it makes a lot of sense to be able to engage. And, and that last point was important, you know, last year, the last 10 years, the last 100 years. But, of course, in the age of COVID, when budgets are stretched, people are out of work, I mean, that's more important than ever. Absolutely. Um, everyone's looking at saving costs. Everyone, you know, obviously needs to improve the bottom line. So uh, what we've found, though, and we'll, we'll talk about this later, is, um, you know, there's, there's this been this ongoing debate around offshoring versus onshoring. What we've seen through COVID is a lot of work is now coming back onshore mm. based on, obviously, COVID, in, COVID instability. But will it remain? Now, I think for the Australian economy, especially in COVID, where we're disconnecting ourselves from the rest of the world, at least for now, uh, maybe that is a really good thing where we can um, partner with small business to be able to provide those services. But... Traditionally, Australian labour like costs have been a lot higher than the rest of the world. But if we can compete over the overall value and cost of a project as opposed to the unit cost price, we know that we can get the work done a lot more efficiently, a lot more productively than if it has to be done offshore four and five times to get it right. So I think there are some um, certain ways to be able to reduce the overall cost of a project and make it more cost efficient and hopefully palatable to Australian medium to large enterprise. Yeah, and look, I mean, we, we've all heard about how we're not doing as much manufacturing in Australia anymore and how, you know, we're all going to become a service economy where, you know, but you can't have everybody cutting everyone else's hair and making everyone else coffees okay. and cutting, you know, cutting their lawns. I mean, you've got to have the knowledge workers who are able to, you know, team together and compete on a global basis. And this is one way that you're helping to make that happen. Yeah, in Australia, we've had a big history of, of major um, of creativity and innovation within the IT industry. So yeah. we can certainly lead the world in innovation. Um, but I think, you know, that where does that start? Um, I hate to say, but it really does start with small businesses, giving someone the chance to be able to have their own business, to be able to innovate and to create. And I think um, by doing that, by, by, by supporting small business, and the federal government is certainly doing so by removing red tape for people to start small business, maybe mm -hmm. this is the age of Australian entrepreneurism to really get into that next gear through small business. Let's so, hope so. Let's hope it's the really rebirth. Good. Yeah, uh, hope, let's hope so. That we, and if we can do our little bit as talent recruiter to, to help that along the way, then that's great. Yeah. So just to introduce independent tribe partnerships. So um, the term itself, independent, comes from the fact that we are um, you know, great supporters of the independent IT industry. What does that mean? It means IT contractors. They're not employed by a certain employer or an organisation. They're independent by nature. Um, and... Our group, you know, Paxis Brand has been around for 56 years, supporting this community for, for all that time. Tribe, well, I think everyone will understand that tribe is the, uh, the agile word for team. Um, mm -hmm. And partnership is really around collaboration, working together um, to be able to create great outcomes. And as you can see, they're, they're expert-led. We'll talk about that very soon. They're repeatable team delivery projects and engagements. So these teams have been preformed. formed um, They're teams of people that already know each other and, 
enjoy working with each other. And, you know, one wise person once told me that um, happy people are productive people. So um, if you can work in a team of experts and, you know, an, an A team, as it were, that's pretty cool. So our tribes really are out there to be able to deliver outcome-based projects. Okay, that's really important to us because where there's an outcome, where there's something to be delivered, we can really drive efficiency and productivity through that. But so we're also experimenting. Yeah, um, we're also experimenting. Um, so off-peak work at Workforce Solutions. As I mentioned earlier, um, the 40-hour working week, remember Henry Ford, 1920s, mm-hmm. um, you know, nine to five working. Um, why is it nine to five? You know, I'm sure there'll be a whole range of people that will come back and fire back saying this is the reasons why. But I will ask you, why can't work be done past five or even before nine or on the weekend or overnight? I think the world of work has become very flexible and the gig economy is certainly driving that. And so for us, um, we really are driving off-peak workforce solutions. Um, We can have tribes that can have a day gig and a a, a night gig. Um, Is there any reason why we can't have a side hustle? It's um, very much taboo in industry. You know, you can't moonlight, you can't have a side hustle, but... Have you ever really questioned why? Um, mm-hmm. If we're working with honest people who have got a lot of integrity, who are concerned about conflict of interest and managing it really well, should there be any reason why people can't have a day gig and then have a night gig? And maybe that could even drive entrepreneurialism further. Mm-hmm. Of course, project and workforce augmentation is the here and now, but we can bring our tribes together to, be, to augment customers um, under their control. Um, and that can be another way of being able to um, drive different levels of outcomes for our customers. And the last one, a lot of people laugh when they see this. Um, yes, it is a unicorn. It is a picture of a unicorn. A unicorn managed service, I know you're laughing. I do get a, I do get a rise out of people. The unicorn managed service is something that we've come up with. It's, it's quite unusual. I don't think I've ever seen it before. But um, and where what it plays to is that, especially in COVID, um, when someone leaves a job and there's going to be a lot of disruption coming through over the next um, wee while, um, Someone who's been around for a long time in a role who decides to leave um, has over the 10, 15 years gathered a lot of different skills and a lot of maybe combined a few jobs and has made his or her role very unique. But when they leave, oh my Lord, all of a sudden you've got to have maybe it's the role of four or five people. However, what employers tend to do, they come to our sister company Paxis and say, I need to replace this person and here's my list of skills that are even bigger than this. Yeah. that's the unicorn job um, we sometimes call them purple squirrels um, really depends on where you come from um, mm. however it's very difficult for anyone to replace that and so therefore those roles can sometimes remain unplaced for three months six months and it, 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 there's, there's a mounting cost around the team having to close ranks to perform extra duties and work extra hard which can create more attrition or the fact that if you don't have that person there it's costing your business money so with the Unicorn Managed Services, what we do is we approach our customers because um, the problem is we can't replace and we offer them the team, a tribe to take the place of that particular person to either as a stop gap until the unicorn is found or to divide the role up back into four or five jobs for it then to be recruited much easily. So it's an unusual service, um, but we're actually finding it to be really popular at the moment and, um, we, and we see that there'll be a lot of demand moving forward. So, um, well, so. a lot of people, you know, often like to think that they're irreplaceable and it would take several people to, to do their job. <laughs> and the reality is that's probably true. I mean, that's true from what you're telling me. And, uh, but Sometimes you need to have those people, yeah, that, that can come together and work with each other and, you know, as you say, fulfill those particular tasks until mm-hmm. another person like that can be found or trained. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a pretty cool way of looking at things because uh, it's a problem that needs to be solved and you're solving it. Yeah, look, at a talent crew, um, Look, the business has been established for more than 10 years out of this Africa, um, but we're treating ourselves as a startup with the, with the philosophy, let's fail fast. Let's come up with some ideas. Let's give it a good go. Um, so far, what you see, what you see on, this, on this particular slide is working really well. However, we're not mm-hmm. afraid to try um, um, further innovation based on further industry feedback. Sure. So let's just go, we'll unpack tribes a little more. So independent tribe partnership starts with a leader. They're expert-led. These leaders really come from our network. Remember, Pax is 56 years. Um, There are more than 30,000 ex-contractors that have been part of that community. We have around 1,500 to 2,000 or so contractors that fluctuates over time um, that work for Paxis and the group. And so these trial leaders come from that community, people that we know, people that we trust, people that we know that can deliver, people with a reputation. 
And so therefore we have the greatest of confidence in these people that they can either they can build their businesses or if they already have a small business, we can certainly support and partner and collaborate with them. The other thing as well is that, you know, when things are going well, that's great. It's, you know, fabulous. We, we high five each other and pat each other on the back. But if things are a bit more challenging, the tribe leader stands up with us to be able to get through that challenge and deliver. So it's really important to have that level of strong partnership. Then we come to the preform team. So what we effectively say to our trial leader is, here's a blank check, go and find the, tr the, the, the team of your dreams, okay? All those amazing people you worked with in the past, let's bring them back together. Now, I ask you, Alex, who wouldn't love to be able to build their own team and lead their own team like that? That'd be pretty cool, right? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you don't get, normally you don't get that sort of offer and uh, it's, it's, I guess it's only through a company like yours and, and through the circumstances of today that the people are available, the resources are available, the money is available, and you can do it. Yeah, and, and work so is available too. Yeah, and when we form these teams, therefore we can already pre-establish that. Well, the culture has obviously been pre-established. There, there's an understanding of, of the team's strengths and weaknesses, to therefore really drive that synergy between them, um, and therefore we can move towards that plug and play engagement, which we'll talk about at the moment. Um, the plug, the, the different flexible engagement options of our tribes. Um, a tiger team that is ready to be deployed on a plug and play basis. Now our tribes, and we'll go into where our tribes fit in uh, uh, from a technical and um, functional perspective later on in the slides. Um, but ultimately uh, where we can plug and play a team allows us to be able to reach peak productivity much quicker than a newly formed team, as we mentioned before. Um, and the tribes can not only be built by technology or function, but sometimes also by customer. So, for example, a large telco, a large bank have a certain way of working where well, we can effectively build a tribe that suits that organisation and therefore we can cut weeks into sometimes days to reach peak productivity. And that's enormous. That's an enormous um, uh, benefit. But the other thing we can do as well is we can um, engage a tribe as an agile, flexible, rapid deploy virtual bench. So moving forward, what we're going to find is that um, the duration of work or tasks becomes shorter. Not everything is a 40-hour working week. Sometimes it could be I need three hours here or five days there or two weeks here, whatever the case may be. Now, um, it's very difficult for recruitment companies, and we know this because obviously Pax is one of the biggest brands in the market. Uh, we know it's very difficult to be able to sometimes find people on short duration or part-time, Okay. However, our tribes are very open to these engagements because whilst it might be a short piece of work, from small things, big things can grow. And by virtue of that, we then are able to work with our tribes to reorganise the work that they've got to be able to accommodate small pieces of work. And this has been highly successful. Okay, We've been really working um, on projects for the last 12 months, let's say, in startup mode. And, and these two have been incredibly popular. Um, in fact, uh, we've been able to do architecture reviews, infrastructure reviews. Uh, we've been able to do leave cover when people, employees go on holidays. So some really cool ways of being able to um, use this virtual bench. And it suits the people who are part of your teams down to the ground because they don't want a full-time job working, as we said, 40 hours a week. They, they enjoy their flexible lives. And um, yeah. this is delivering them that consistent work that uh, makes it all possible. The other thing as well, Alex, is that sometimes our virtual bench can be used as off-peak um, and sometimes even as a side hustle. So therefore, people want more flexibility in their life. And so therefore, what we want to be able to do is build mechanisms to be able to provide it and to benefit both the customer and the talent. Okay, And I think that's really important. Um, lastly, uh, all of our engagements are fully managed engagements, uh, but includes our in-house project and workforce management teams. So I mentioned before that we have an internal project management consultancy called, consultancy called All About Expert. So they provide our in-house project management, sometimes light touch, sometimes heavy touch, depending on the solution requirement. We also have our own in-house workforce management team. Now, our workforce management team is designed to be able to take uh, a lot of the administration and process work away from both the customer and the tribe to establish service. And that can involve assisted onboarding, induction, performance reviews, ongoing performance reviews. Um, the independent market contractors generally don't get a lot of feedback on the work that they do. And, and to be perfectly frank, um, they are certainly entitled to it because feedback allows you to understand whether you're being successful or not successful and need to get back on the critical path. So our workforce managers are always looking for that level of feedback to be able to provide you know, that, 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 um, 
um, that information to make sure we keep keeping projects on track or saying, well done, good job, which then inspires better performance. But it's, it's also part of that whole measurability. Yeah, no, without a doubt. Uh, but it also covers knowledge management. Um, it covers asset management, especially in these days of working remotely. So um, it, it, it's a very valuable um, service we provide as part of our tribe um, engagements. So just quickly, I'll just um, give you an overview in, in, in graphics how tribes work. So um, we mentioned before we have our tribe leader and our tribe team members. So they form the nucleus of our tribe, our plug and play repeatable delivery team. But every once in a while, uh, our tribe is not big enough because they're small businesses to provide uh, a full solution. So what we do as part of our organization is we augment the tribe with resources. So we don't augment the customer, we want to augment the tribe. The tribe um, and, and ourselves provide due diligence over those resources to make sure that the resources are expert, are suitable, but also fit into that culture of delivery and therefore to be able to maintain that. So that's really, really important. And as you can appreciate, um, when we've got, you know, between 1,500 and 2,000 contractors working for us at any one time and 30,000 ex-contractors, we've got a large selection uh, of people that we can work with. Our trial specialisations are literally a who's who of technology and functions because we've got so many people to choose from to, to, to collaborate and partner with. And I'll show you a slide at the end that will give you an idea of the trials we've already formed. We've got 24 already in production. And then lastly, we have our tribe support platform. So this is a front, middle and back office outsource of our tribes because with all due respect to our tribe leaders, they may not be great, for example, at sales. Um, not everyone is good at sales, okay? So therefore, if you're not good at sales, and you can't drive a pipeline for your business, then you're falling off a cliff, unfortunately, and that's really tough, right? Yeah. So um, our organisation has more than 50 sales professionals who are working with some you know, very well-known medium to large size enterprises plus government. So therefore, we're always looking at building the pipeline of our tribes. We've got our PM support and governance through our sister company, All About Expert. We've got our on-site workforce management. We also have a service delivery team working within us as well. The finance and payroll, um, this can be another bit of a hazard for small business. Mm. You know, you're, you know you're, you've know, you got a, a project to deliver. It's very exciting. I'm going to do this. You sign commercials and then realising you're on 60-day payment terms. Ouch. Or, or, or six-month payment terms, you know. Crazy well, month. there are customers out there with 120 days, Alex. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And so with that, the problem is, is that you've paid your resources, your team, on two-week terms. And now you're waiting three to six months for your money. And that can be really, really tough for small business, very costly and can sometimes end up in you know, bankruptcy and financial ruin. So for us, we've been supporting small business for an awful long time through our Paxis brand. So what we do, we handle the payment terms and the, pay and, and, and the debt factoring. Okay? We allow our tribes to have terms that allow them to stay financial, to preserve their working capital for future scaling. And therefore, we make sure that we're helping with and managing those commercials. We also have our own legal commercial marketing team. So therefore, what we want to do is we want our tribes to be experts in what they do, be the heroes in their domain and be able to outsource their weaknesses, as it were, or their non-strengths. So, um, so that's how we work um, and play together. So just in summary, we have our three engagement pathways for our tribes. Um, we have our full tribe deployment, which is an outcome-based model, uh, outcome-based projects. And they're very much plug and play repeatable team delivery, really drawing on that, um, that, that synergy of preforming a team. They can also then be engaged on a virtual bench managed service, which could be on demand, short term, part time, remote, with expert consultant deployments. Now, when one of their consultants is being deployed into a, a virtual bench situation, it still has the backing of the tribe leader. Something should go wrong, as I mentioned at the start of the presentation, talent crew and the tribe leader stand up to make sure that things are delivered. Okay, so, um, so therefore nothing stands in the way of delivery. And then we have our Unicorn Managed Service again, really engaging tribes to collaborate together with our clients to be able to deliver those hard to find resources to allow them as a stopgap to find the unicorn or the purple squirrel, or of course, to be able to break the roll up and to be able to then um, you know, continue with normality. So what we've, thought, what we've developed here is a Project Solutions MSP. Uh, model where we have our tribes um, at the top you can see there they either work singly or even collaboratively we've got a number of tribes working together to form one solution which is really cool and exciting and very innovative very creative sort of taking uh, the whole thing to the next level 
Pretty much, yeah. Um, so, and it's really exciting to be able to introduce two, two or three or multiple tribe leaders to collaborate on an engagement, especially with our sister company, All That Expert, running project management as well. So um, we've had some really exciting meetings and, and projects around collaboration. Down the bottom, you can see our range of customers, obviously, um, and then through the middle is the platform itself. Um, so for us to be able to make that level of connection really allows us to proudly support and connect independent small business to big business and really allow them to be the hero of the day. Some benefits, um, so obviously from a, an outcome-based project engagement perspective, moving away from basic TNM, we increase engagement efficiency and productivity whilst being able to reduce the overall cost of a project uh, and maintain expectations between our tribes, talent crew and our customers, which is really, really important. The expert project leadership is really important as well um, to be able to have experts that are known and trusted within our network. Therefore, we can talk to our customers about you know, that level of trust and integrity to be, allow them to be able to um, engage quickly, to be able to make sure that we can get the job done efficiently and productively. Repeatable plug and play teams, um, as mentioned, speeding up that and ramping up um, project uh, times to peak productivity is really, really important. Um, if we can cut weeks down to days, then that is a huge bonus to projects and to business and, and, and tribes alike. And you've done that many a time. And I can give you some use cases around that as well. The highly flexible agile engagement models, whether it be the plug and play tribes, the virtual bench, uh, or even the unicorn managed services, um, really give a different angle to solutions. Um, so not everything has to be 40 hours a week. Um, I think our record is uh, standing up a two hour engagement inside of two hours. Okay, the hardest bit was actually working out how to invoice it, um, but we worked it out, okay? Yeah. Um, but the customer and the tribe were both very appreciative of being able to engage. Uh, expert pre-sales capability. Um, so when we work with pre-sales, um, um, when we understand that a, a lead has turned into an opportunity and we're now going to talk to the customer, we bring our tribe to the table, our tribe leader to the table really quickly, very early yeah. in the process, to help the customer to be able to form their problem statement and their early scope, okay? The other thing as well is we don't white label our tribes, okay? So um, we will introduce Joe Blogs from XYZ Consulting. Um, why do we do that? Because I think transparency breeds trust. It really does support trust and integrity. And so um, we don't want to, um, to create this illusion that everyone's part of talent crew and we're the ones that are providing service. Let's let that small business be the hero of the day, okay? Mm -hmm. So in our proposals, in our pitch decks, you'll see their logos, you'll see their backgrounds, We'll even tell you how we know these people. And I think that's really important to developing early trust. And lastly, we'll keep going back to it, is highly cost efficient, uh, effective and efficient solutions. Um, you know, if we're not cost efficient, cost effective, it just turns into a great idea. Okay, so we really do need to keep our eye on that and really on the commercials. Um, just a bit of a taste of our tribe catalog. So as I say, in the last 12 months, we've built 24 tribes. Um, and um, we're really proud to be able to partner with these companies. Um, everything from cloud services to data science, uh, we've got three data science tribe uh, tribes are really, really smart people. Um, we've got one tribe that's has, led by five PhDs in data science, especially around IoT sensory, um, AI, ML, NLP, some awesome talent there. Salesforce and ServiceNow, it's very much the here and now applications, um, and we've got some amazing tribe leaders who lead this, some of the best in the independent industry. Infrastructure, uh, we both have an on-peak and an off-peak tribe. A lot of infrastructure changes happen overnight. And so we've actually built a tribe of site hustlers that can handle that level of demand. Project and program management, we have a number of tribes, including our own All About Expert internal sister brand um, who can provide services here. Software development is, is such a large field. Um, so we have a number of tribes working in that space. And of course, it wouldn't be complete without cybersecurity. Um, it's becoming incredibly important um, in you know, 2020 and beyond. Um, we have a number of cyber tribes that are working as part of our ecosystem as well. And just to you know, say, so we've been delivering projects now for the last nine to 12 months. Um, we're really proud to show you uh, a number of our, our, of our success stories. Um, and, and with our success stories, um, some of them have, become, have, have come about as a result of, of, of COVID. If you look at the top left corner, um, we had a customer, a large telco, who had a major issue around the network operations center environment. Um, they had fully outsourced this off, offshore to India. And unfortunately, India, like the rest of the world, was hit very hard at the early stages of COVID. And they didn't have the opportunity to go online. 
So we were asked to stand up a complete network operations center. Now, um, on meeting the customer, um, the customer said, when can I interview everyone? And we said, well, we don't work like that. We we're going to give you a full solution because time, the clock is ticking. We need to be able to help you. So they agreed to that. They took that leap of faith. We stood up a team inside 24 hours. We had them productive inside this environment inside five days. In fact, handover from the incumbent um, uh, resources who were the third level support guys who were incredibly exhausted. Um, um, we took a handover. Um, it was a six week project inside um, four weeks. We took care of more than 300 critical incidents and brought the outstanding queue to less than 10. So it was a pretty phenomenal effort. And the customer even said to us, can't believe you did this. It normally takes 15 weeks to be able to um, bring a team in. So we were delighted at that outcome as you'd appreciate. Um, mm. And as you can see here from the list, I won't go through them all, but everything from big data, uh, architecture, engineering projects for a government authority, uh, infrastructure and application environment audits, uh, MS Teams um, uh, migration um, for a, a large school who found themselves caught short of the early days of COVID um, in their collaborative um, approach, agile coaching, consulting, network transformation, um, design programs, field services. Um, we really are able to stretch far and wide with the support and collaboration of our tribe partners. Um, so, and whilst there's some great success stories here, um, there's a whole bunch of other projects currently in delivery. So we're incredibly proud with the progress and success we've, we've, we've been able to generate inside a very short period of time. And we're very excited about the future. Well, those are great testimonials and uh, yeah, very good. So look, let me, uh, let's, let's continue with the, uh, the rest of the interview. So yes. what's the short version of your journey in the world of tech that has led you to the national director position? I understand you started at Paxis in 1998 and you took a sort of journey through the world of tech and, and now you're back via talent crew. Yes, um, it's been an interesting journey. Um, so I suppose um, I've been in the industry for 20 plus years. Um, you know, mm -hmm. let's say I think um, the mercy rules at 20 years, you can say 20 plus. Uh, my career started um, in the recruitment professional services industry within IT in 1998, as you mentioned, in January 98. And um, I started working for Paxis. Um, so I was with Paxis for 12 years. Um, I um, ended up becoming one of the most successful account executives. I was national account director for a large telco um, for uh, a big proportion of that time. We were number one supplier for about six years of, of my 12, which mm -hmm. was great. Um, and then in 2009, I decided that I um, needed a change. I needed a new challenge. Um, so I moved on to a number of different companies. I was head of account management um, for um, Ross Human Directions and Chandler McLeod for a couple of years. Um, Chandler bought Ross. Um, and then I moved on to um, um, Finite and Phoenix Cell Professional Services. My first taste when I, when I started working for Phoenix Cell um, to IT Professional Services um, and worked with a number of um, large enterprise organisations. I spent six years there. And then before moving on to Manpower Group and Experis uh, Project Solutions. Um, so I had a taste of working for a global. But I must admit, Paxis was always in my blood. Um, the group was in my blood. I had many um, solid relationships and obviously knew a lot of people um, and many of them are still there today. So there was a bit of a knock on the door one day from uh, an old colleague who's now Chief Executive, Jason Trevethick, um, who asked me, would I come back to help them start um, IT project professional services? So um, I said to him, yeah, look, I'd love to come back. Um, however, Doing the, the here and now, uh, more of the same. So let's say time material based, style based engagements. I said to him, there's, there's much more to it. I've been doing some research and developing um, some, um, some ideas. He was willing to listen and here I am. Um, you know, nearly 18 months down the track with um, Talent Crew in a, a, you know, a small startup in a massive organisation. And it's been, uh, it's been a really interesting, challenging and fun ride. And look, you had so many different uh, types of... Uh... And work, you know, jobs and companies that you work for and completed in, in terms of that last slide there, or second last slide. Uh, but, you know, what would have been probably the most requested, um, you know, task that the talent crew team could do over the past 11 months of COVID? Um, to be honest, it's been far and wide um, because effectively what we've done is we've developed a methodology, okay, an engagement methodology, which is quite different to everyone else. Um, and you know, we pitched this to 1,001 clients. Um, and the good news is, I think, you know, um, that no one's really seen this before in the independent market. Mm. 
And what we've been able to do is really listen to our customers in regards to what they need. And so therefore we can build our tribes based on that level of demand and feedback. So what we have seen is a lot of demand in data science, without a doubt. Um, data um, is, is, is obviously the new oil, as it were. Um, mm. And so there's a lot of demand in the data science field, um, all the way out to IoT, AI, ML. Um, also business applications, um, Salesforce, ServiceNow, Pega, really big names, and they've been incredibly successful. Uh, what a lot of organisations are finding, though, is that the talent is really hard to find, and they're sometimes having to, you know, build their own teams from scratch. And so, you know, the tribe uh, methodology and engagement really suits uh, you know, those applications. So we've built some really cool tribes there with some great capability. Um, Cybersecurity, um, without a doubt, um, certainly very, very popular right now with um, a lot of cyber attacks. So we build a number of different cyber tribes, automation around software and infrastructure, infrastructure transformation, agile transformation. Um, there's a lot of different um, spaces where there's a lot of demand right now. Um, and I suspect we'll probably find others in our, in our, in our feedback and our quest as well. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess people have heard about what you can do and they're really coming to you with complex problems that they're now just expecting you you'll be able to solve. Pretty much. Um, look, nothing is off limits. But the one thing we'll do as well is that when a customer comes to us with a problem and they expect that a tribe is already spun up, if that tribe is not spun up, we'll be on it straight off the bat. We don't have a tribe, but let's look towards building one. And we've actually built a number of tribes on demand like that to suit demand, and they've been highly successful. But once again, the same methodology applies. People from our network, um, we then you know, obviously ask them to form their team, and then we spin that up. So it's a, it's a, it's a really efficient way of being able to develop that service. So if there's somebody out there who's one of these uh, unicorns or is, you know, they've got a particular skill, even like a legacy skill, I mean, you know, which COBOL and Fortran programmer thought that they would be uh, in work in 98 and 99 <laughs> working on the YTK project after you know, yep. using their skills in the 60s and 70s? But, you know, how do people get in touch with you if they want to say, hey, I'd love to be considered to be part of one of these teams? Look, it's pretty simple. Um, so to get in touch with us, um, our website is www.talentcrew.com.au. Um, so obviously you click through the pages and, and go to the contact page to get to us. Probably the most, the easiest way is to look me up on LinkedIn uh, or to look for the Talent Crew page on LinkedIn. It's an easy way to get in contact with us. And whether it be myself or uh, any of us at Talent Crew, um, we're certainly um, happy to, to have a chat to explore um, your problems, customer problems, or to that extent as well, um, for tribe, potential tribe members, if you're interested, then... Um, come and have a chat and we can understand and, um, and see whether, you know, whether the, the time is right for you. So I've got to always finish on the, the same sort of last three questions. I mean, it seems as though in the last year we've gone through a decade's worth of change, you know, with so many things now <laughs> online and everything's been accelerated. But how do you see this concept and just talent crew and I don't know, the whole industry evolving over the next decade to 2030 in, in a nutshell? Yeah, look. It's a really interesting question, Alex, because, look, the one thing is that change is the constant in our lives. Um, and I think the world and the, the future of work um, is always changing. Um, you know, I look back 20 years ago um, or so when I first started the industry, um, and obviously change was a lot slower. Um, you know, our parents had jobs for life. Um, redundancy was something that, you know, if you were made redundant, oh, my Lord, there was a real stigma attached to it. And I think... You know, studies show that there was an average of one redundancy in your lifetime around 20 years ago. Now we're talking four or five. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's not a stigma anymore. It's based on changing requirements, um, you know, advances in technology. So whilst digital transformation is amazing, it's creating some amazing opportunities for all of us moving forward to the future, there's also um, you know, a cost to that, which is human disruption. So I think the general trends that I see is that the gig economy will continue to grow it will become a movement which unfortunately, or fortunately, we, we, we can't ignore, okay? It's not going away, it's gonna to continue to grow. Um, you know, 90 million Americans right now practicing every day, 30 odd percent of the Australian workforce. So um, Alex, I read a report recently um, from KPMG, uh, which forecasted that the gig economy um, by 2025 will have a 60% participation rate. That's, that's, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can't ignore this is not going away. So ultimately, we need, to, we need to prepare and plan for it because there are going to be an enormous amount of people that are currently employed on a permanent basis who will be switching into this. Now, a lot of people call it underemployment. 
you know, and it sometimes has some negative connotations. I'm getting less than 40 hours a week. I can't afford to pay my bills. And I, and I get that. But the reality is that everyone has the ability to be able to get a second job or form a company to have multiple engagements, multiple customers, which is why we really came up with this whole tribe idea. So let's encourage people to be able to find more opportunities. In fact, work with us and our sales team will help you do that as well. It really does come through your personal network, which we'll cover in a moment. So I think that's a really important trend as well, is that, um, you know, be prepared for this level of change. It's coming. If you're not prepared for it, then you're going to get really anxious. You're going to be, you know, you're going to be greatly affected by it. But if you're ready for it, you can just click into gear. How do you get ready though? Um, look, I think soft skills are really important. Soft skills are probably the most critical skill. Whilst we're in a culture now or a time of continuous learning, your soft skills are probably the most crucial set of skills you're ever going to have. And it's not just about public speaking, all right? It's about being able to sell yourself. Now, if you think about it, if you're always having to look for work, let's say every three to six months, or you need to go and find and pump up your pipeline, then one of the biggest skills is going to be the ability to sell, to small talk, build rapport, build trust, okay? So it's not just going to be the recruitment agent that finds you a job. Um, more than 70% of jobs come through people's networks these days, right? So therefore, being able to build your personal network, your personal brand, your digital brand, there's an awful lot of work that people can do in this area. And I think it's going to be a continuing trend, okay? So I think at the end of the day, if you can't beat them, join them. So therefore, start now, okay? It's realistically, it's only a process. So I, I have my own side gig where I have a coaching business where I help people through these type of, of process changes and life changes around redundancy. And this is one of the biggest things that I coach is I coach IT people how to sell themselves, okay? So I think that'll be a big trend moving forward. Uh, another big trend, which once again is that little taboo subject of the side hustle, the moonlighting, the second job. Um, traditionally, a lot of employers are against it, okay? How can you work for someone else, you know, take all our secrets and so on and so forth? But the reality is, is that we all sign agreements. We all sign confidentiality agreements, IP agreements, blah, 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 blah. Thou shall not all those things. Um, and I think invariably, most people, I believe, are honest, they have integrity, and they don't want trouble, okay? So where there's a, a direct conflict of interest, fair enough. You know, if you're working for a bank, you probably can't do a side hustle with, with another bank. But it doesn't always have to be like that. It could be you work for a bank and the side hustle is government. And as so long as you're following the rules, that should be totally fine. But the side hustle is, um, in some of my personal opinion, is a really good way for people to try entrepreneurialism. Okay, so if you've got nothing to lose and everything to gain and you're not throwing the baby out with the bathwater and having to give up your full-time job to try uh, 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 to, to, to be creative in business, then maybe it becomes easier. could be you've got one or two hours a week that you dedicate to it and then it becomes successful and then you start increasing the hours and maybe then you have a four-day main gig and a one-day side hustle and then all of a sudden your current day employer likes the fact you can be more flexible with your time and it can pay off for both sides. So I think there are a lot of different benefits. And I think you'll hear more about the side hustle as the gig economy grows over time. Yeah, I've heard a lot about side hustles. And in terms of the network, I mean, one of the things that I think Talent Queer really um, encapsulates well, I mean, there's a famous saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know. But there's a, oh. a twist There's a twist to that. There's a twist to that, which I heard a few years ago, and I thought was very clever. And it says, it's not what you know, and it's not who you know, but it's who knows you. <laughs> <laughs> very true your uh, no, personal like network that. your personal network is one of your greatest assets in life mm -hmm. and it's not just about getting a job um for example um you're going overseas you're looking for a hotel a nice hotel to stay in right your network comes to the rescue by giving you recommendations or to build that pergola or mow that lawn or whatever the case may be buy a car okay mm -hmm. um we really do rely on that now to get a job Absolutely. It's not what you know, it's who you know. And I think, um, you know, and, and my, my side business, that's what we specialise in, is helping people to be able to build their networks to be self-sustainable. Okay. And it is a job. You know, if you're not used to uh, networking, you're not used to building rapport, socialising, um, I'll be honest, it's just a process. And very smart people can learn processes really, really easily. What I do, I'm not, I'm, I'm certainly not special or by any stretch of the imagination, but I just understand this process because I've been doing it for a long time. If you ask me to program in Java or Fortran or whatever you ask me to do, I'm sure I'll be a total failure off the bat, but I'm sure I can learn. It just takes time. Yeah. 
So my second last question is always, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received in life to help you get where you are today? Well, wow, I always get that sort of reaction where people smile and laugh and think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a lot of advice over the years. Holy Lord, I wish I'd have taken some of it. But anyway, that's another story. Um, when I first started the industry, um, there was a gentleman, I won't mention names, I'll protect the innocent, a client of mine with a big telco who said to me, focus on service. Said, you never know, but the next person you talk to could be a future customer, okay? So treat everyone with the greatest of service and the utmost of care. Um, and I think I've really taken that through my entire career. Um, and, and, and it's really paid dividends for me in my career. I think, you know, um, the way that I work with people, everyone, um, you know, I treat everyone the same. If you are the, the most powerful client or the graduate, um, I think everyone deserves that level of respect and attention and service. Mm. And um, hopefully if I look for testimonials, people will say that about me as well. Um, but, you know, that I've really held that to my heart. Um, the other thing as well is around strengths and weaknesses. Um, a long time ago, someone said to me, um, when we talk about strengths and weaknesses, and of course there's advice around, you know, work, you know, identifying work on your weaknesses or areas of concern. One wise person said to me, um, identify your strengths and look to improve them and, 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 and make them into superpowers, develop them into superpowers. And with your weaknesses, identify them, acknowledge them, and outsource them. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can't, Very and I think the, the, the moral of that story is you can't be good at everything. Um, and you could spend an entire lifetime trying to bring a, a weakness into a strength, but if you're not cognitively programmed to do it, it may not work. And I think um, that advice actually brought me towards that tribe concept, right? Collaboration. Collaboration is really important. Acknowledging you can't do everything, but be powerful in the stuff that you're amazing at. Be the hero. Yeah. It's like the opposite of that. Yeah, that, right. those, are, those are two great pieces of advice. I was going to say that that the last piece of advice is probably the opposite of the famous saying that says, it's better to be a jack of all trades than a master of none. No, it's probably <laughs> better to master a few trades and uh, outsource the rest so that Jack can have a job and Jill can have a job too. But everyone's got advice, right? So you're absolutely right. So everything work, everyone's different. Every works, things work for different people. I think for me, those are the two things that um, I, if I look back at my career, have made a big difference. So what's your final message to IT Wire viewers and readers and to your current and future customers and partners and team members? Um, I think rather than a message to customers, I think it's to everyone as a, as a person, as a, as a, you know, um, a, a worker, um, an employee, an entrepreneur, business owner. Um, and it really does come down to the future of work. So when it comes to work, um, always be ready for change, okay? Prepare now. Because um, the advice that I'd give you is that it's coming, okay? You might be the most secure person in the world, uh, in your job, um, but with all due respect, that one fateful day you're invited to a meeting and you open the door and there's someone that you know, your manager, and someone you don't know, which may be HR, and there's a folder on the table and they say, look, unfortunately, Alex, you've been made redundant. And it's that particular moment in time your life goes into a tailspin because you're the, one of the centres of your life, your job, 40 to 60 odd hours or so a week, is has collapsed. Um, and not all is lost, but at that particular moment in time, you know, uh, all of a sudden there's a lot of thoughts running through your, your mind and they're probably not necessarily positive. So I think the advice that I would get everyone is be ready for change and already start with your plan B, whether that be your side hustle which could take the edge off something that happens really suddenly, you know, then you've got something to fall back on. I've got one myself, just in case, never know. Um, but always be ready for change and then you won't be as shocked by it and you will handle it much better. And the other thing as well is that if you're ever in a situation like that, especially the blokes out there, is don't be afraid to talk to someone about a problem, okay? Okay. Um, it's, it's sometimes difficult to talk about problems, um, you know, admitting that you've got a, you know, something wrong or a weakness or whatever the case may be. It's great strength in being able to talk to someone about a problem. Um, and I think in this, this time of COVID, never a true word was spoken. Um, reach out, talk, don't be afraid. You know, the people that um, trust you, um, the people you have relationships with are not going to judge you. They want to help you. So that's probably the piece of advice I have. Well, I really appreciate your time. Trevor Churchley, National Director at Talent Crew. It's been a great uh, pleasure to talk to you. And best of luck. I hope you get a lot of extra teams and more team members and solve many more problems. Talk to you again. Thank you very much for your time, Alex. And thanks to all your viewers as well. I really appreciate your time in, in, in watching. 
this video and um, if we can help, um, please reach out. I'd love to help. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.